So I did not plan on speaking out publicly. And then uh, about three, four weeks ago, I was reading the news, reading the uh, court filings, and they were going to release the witness list um, for all the witnesses. So at that point, I said, oh, so, you know, ultimately, I said, let me jump in front of this. What a moment it must have been when Judge Eileen Cannon, the Trump appointee overseeing the classified documents case, asked the special counsel's team when they'd be publishing their witness list. Like a record scratch, the famously stoic Jack Smith reportedly sat upright in his seat, raised his eyebrows, looking visibly shocked. As you heard, it was reason enough for one central witness, Brian Butler, Trump employee number five, to shed his protective anonymity in an attempt to get out ahead of things. It wasn't the first eyebrow-raising move Judge Cannon has made, and it certainly wasn't the last. But where such instances previously fell under the heading highly irregular, like indulging Team Trump's efforts to delay and entertaining dubious legal arguments, now her conduct appears downright baffling to legal experts and exceedingly troubling. As our friend Harry Littman put it in his L.A. Times column, Cannon's latest order on the Presidential Records Act confirms Cannon has truly crossed the line into running interference for the former president, who put her on the bench. Joining me at the table, Democratic strategist and director of the public policy program at Hunter College, Basil Smeichel. Andrew is also back with us. Andrew, first of all, jury instructions sounds like a sort of mundane topic, but remind us of Judge Cannon's decision on that this week and why today we're really seeing pushback from the legal community on her conduct. Sure. Um, and the one thing I would take issue with, at least from this legal commentator is I, I don't think her conduct is baffling. Um, I think it's intentional. Uh, and so to, to your point, um, remember that this is a judge who in the pre-indictment phase was reversed not once, but twice by the conservative 11th Circuit in scathing language because of actions that both times were highly favorable and against the law for Donald Trump. That's not me saying it. That's the 11th Circuit saying it. Um, with respect to the jury instructions, one, it's odd to be talking about jury instructions when you haven't even set a trial date. But leave that aside. She gave the parties two options to explore and to provide instructions on, both of which were legally wrong, both of which were favorable to Donald Trump. Um, so she is consistently making erroneous legal decisions. They are consistently always on the side of Donald Trump. Um, and as the transcript shows in terms of how that came about, it came about because it's precisely what Donald Trump's lawyers asked for and said should be done, and then she did it. There is no law to support it. Um, and to be in the weeds, she is, keeps on referring to the Presidential Records Act and wants to instruct the jury on the Presidential Records Act. That is not the crime. It has nothing to do with the crime. Um, it is what Donald Trump wants the case to be about, but it is not actually what the criminal law is about. So this is a judge, in my estimation, who's engaging in, out in the open, catch and kill which is to never have this case go to trial before the election, which is really, it's also, you know, if you just think about Donald Trump and what a defendant who actually thinks they're innocent running for the presidency, they would want their day in court to clear their name. That is not what's going on here. He, is, he wants to avoid a public trial where facts and law could matter, um, and that is what she is doing for him. Put another way, I want you to take a listen to something MSNBC legal analyst Christy Greenberg, former SDNY criminal division deputy chief, said about Judge Cannon earlier on Morning Joe. Take a listen. I was willing to give her the benefit of the doubt initially, just she's a new judge, she's inexperienced, she's taking time, and she's trying to get it right. But she's getting it dead wrong. And every time she gets it dead wrong, it's always in Donald Trump's favor. The PRA, whether or not something is personal or presidential, is not the point. He's charged with committing violations of the Espionage Act, and nothing in the Presidential Records Act gives him authorization to have classified information. It's a red herring. If this were a law school exam, she would be failing. So that comports exactly with Andrew's uh, assessment, Basil. Politically, how does this delay work for him? 
Well, it's always part of the larger tactic, all right, of delay, delay, delay. But what we're seeing is what Andrew's bringing out and what others are bringing out is that the judge's finger's on the scale. Mm -hmm. So once that happens, you know, Donald Trump knows, and to Andrew's point, he knows exactly what he's doing. He's essentially feeding her the talking points to deliver back into the courtroom so that it could be adjudicated the way that he would want it to be. That creates talking points for him to go out and and energize his, his base about. Out. Um, and so this is this to me, look, I'm not a lawyer, but um, this was always a concern with this case in particular, that something that is important as being able to protect classified documents would be in the hands not just of Donald Trump and his supporters, but also of a judge who was clearly leaning on trying to find a way to exonerate him. I would also say that the revealing of the witnesses. Yes. Uh, yep. That is incredibly troubling. You had the secretaries of state on earlier mm -hmm. talking about part of this longer conversation uh, around people in the public eye or in public service being targeted. What is to stop that from happening here? I mean, these individuals, I'm not saying that they should be, I'm not saying they should be lauded, but I'm saying they should at least be protected if they're going to participate in the process. That, that should be a real concern. Absolutely. Andrew, I, one more clip from Ari's interview with Brian Butler. Take a listen. So you had the impression from the people around that Trump knew the things that went down were bad or illegal, and he didn't want that on video. Oh, absolutely. I mean, why else would you need to know the video footage? And then why were they calling and asking me, hey, why didn't you tell me that this guy was on video moving boxes? Andrew, you always say in assessing criminality, it's helpful to observe the way a person was acting at the time. As Butler lays out, it, it seems, seems that Trump knew that what he was doing was wrong. How would a prosecutor present that to a jury? Well, this is the old adage. It's you know the cover up is worse than the crime. But here, that sort of that sort of consciousness of guilt of you want to get rid of the videotape. I mean, this is not rocket science. First of all, he had the documents there, and he wasn't giving them back. And he gave them the parts he gave back was in drips and drabs. And he was lying to his lawyers. And then he engaged in allegedly two forms of obstruction of justice. One of which. It relates to the clip that you played, which is trying to get rid of the videotape that could help prove uh, the underlying crime. So, I mean, this is a rock crusher of a case. Um, and just just to be very serious about this, if it weren't for the January 6th indictment, which is so important in terms of um, the allegations related to overthrowing our democracy, this is this could not be a more important case. Anybody who has been in the government in the intelligence community is actually has to be horrified. Whether you are a Republican or a Democrat, the idea that you wouldn't make those kinds of documents that are so important to the national security of our nation sacrosanct, and that you would be obstructing justice in, in order to keep them in a locale which is a honeypot for our adversaries is it's so anathema to what it means to be in public service. Um, it is such a horrific set of allegations um, that form the basis of this indictment.